So today we have the infamous James Trussart in our booth with Lawn Friend, of course, and Carol Gale. And a lot of uh, people know about James Trussart's extraordinary guitars. And uh, maybe not everyone knows Carol, but Carol's been in the club industry for many years and has booked many, many great name acts at her club in San Francisco. And she came to acquire Willie DeVille's guitar that was made by James. And when she acquired the guitar, she sent it to Los Angeles to James to have it checked out and tweaked and, and uh, invited me to come over and photograph this amazing guitar. And I've been wanting to photograph a James Tussard guitar for a long time. Well, I dude. shot Tom Murillo's guitar, but we didn't do that one. So yeah, you this can is come my back number one. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and thank you for the wonderful uh, photos, frame photos you sent me. Uh, wonderful. That's of Kenneth Bryan's yeah. true start. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And so, Carol, tell us a little bit at first about how you got a hold of the Willie DeVille guitar. Well, you know, I'm a huge James Trussard guitar fan. I have several other ones. I'm looking around on the internet one day, and there was this, this guitar from Willie DeVille's 1993 Streets of Desire guitar. Yeah. Couldn't believe that it was there. And I even wrote to James and said, do you think that this is legitimate? He said, oh yeah, I remember making that guitar for him. And he had made another one or two other guitars. So there it was, and so I bought it. And then eventually sent it to James, who consented to fix it up, you know, uh, shine it up, made a few modifications. He built some other parts for it and it sounds amazing now. Now tell us about the building of the guitar and how that came about with Willie. Well, uh, Willie, uh, we uh, became friends in um, one, I was a, a, a fan of uh, Mick DeVille, you know, his first band, and uh, came over to my hometown in uh, Nancy, uh, in France, and um, we just, we met, and uh, we, I don't know, we, we just became close friends. And, uh, and so he, he asked, uh, and I, uh, he asked me to, uh, to uh, show him a couple of guitars, and uh, I had, uh, if I recall, I had a, a silver one, shiny, and he was like, whoa, oh, yeah, wait. Right. I need I need this to uh, record and then start to call me like uh, every week and say well where is that and stuff so I sent the guitar to him in New York and um, and then um, he um, he was coming back every year for a tour in Europe and he was really underrated in 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 America. Uh, for different reasons, but um, he was really, uh, really, he got really popular in Europe. And well, tell, uh, tell us a little bit about like what he used that guitar on, what he played it on. Oh, you can check on YouTube. There's a, a, a lot of uh, videos uh, about him. Like uh, um, after that one, I made uh, one of the first uh, what I call steals up and. Um, at the time, Willie was uh, moved to uh, New Orleans, and so uh, uh, kind of uh, hook him up with like friends of mine. That uh, I mean, I moved, I, I moved for, uh, I moved in '72, so I was like playing uh, fiddle with a friend of mine, Zachary Richard, and so. Uh, um, I decided to do something uh, related to New Orleans, so it was like a big alligator, gold bladed and gray, and uh, the body was a, a kind of a, a translucent uh, green, and so green and gold and stuff. And uh, uh, years later, that was a good, like, you know, catchy. Uh, combination of colors and stuff and you know, you know uh, Barbara Lynn asked me 
to make a guitar and so we can check on YouTube she uh, so she picked up she, I said what what is your favorite color and she said oh it's gold and I said oh okay and so I decided to do gold roses and the same kind of green thing you know so whatever so really um, uh, all this life we we've been like when he was coming to record in LA and stuff it's been like using my guitars a lot you know uh, and, and also one day he called me and said can you uh, hook me up with your with your friend Sandy Landras in, uh, in Lafayette and uh, I said well yeah but he's like he's busy he's on tour with John Hyatt right now but I have a friend of mine who uh, who's in uh, in Alsas, and uh, he plays like you know he, he can play slide like Long George or Ray Cooter, and he also he plays fiddle and he's a classical trained vi violinist and stuff. And uh, make the story short, uh, Freddy Coella, uh, that's his name. Uh, Talked with Willie for I think 12 to 13 years, and uh, um, in once in Switzerland, I was there, and uh, Willie, my friend Zachary, Dr. John, they had a, a special tour called called the New Orleans Review or something. And uh, with the wild magnolias and stuff, and I remember I was like next to Bob Dylan, who was watching the show. And uh, and at the end of the show, uh, Patrick. <laughs> and uh, uh, Bob went to Freddie and say, "Great slide." Years later, Freddie uh, quit with Willie's band and was looking for something different. Uh, I mean, like he moved to Los Angeles, that's why. And uh, he said, I don't know, uh, maybe I, I can work with you on the guitars and stuff. And I uh, said, yeah, let's try. So, one night he's sitting in my kitchen and uh, Tony Garnier, a Bob Dylan's bass player, came over to pick up the bass I was I just built for him. And Tony said, uh, hey, uh, do you know a, a guitar player that uh, we're looking for a guitar player because uh, Charlie has to quit for a bit, you know, whatever. And I said, yeah, this guy, like, here, <laughs> sitting here, he said, oh, wow, yeah, yeah, so, Freddie, hey. I thought he was actually sitting over here, I'm really looking <laughs> and, for and, and so, <laughs> so, uh, the next day, Freddie went for the audition, and uh, got the gig, and ah, went on tour, story. went on tour with Bob, you know, for, for a year. I have a small anecdotal contribution. I was honored to, privileged to see Willie DeVille as Mink DeVille open for Rock Pile, Nick Lowe, and Elvis Costello at Hollywood High School in 1978. Oh, wow. Lucky yo. Yeah. So, and that was special. He was dynamic. Uh, Carol, did you ever get to book Willie in your club? And what was the name of your club? The club is called Club Can't Tell. No, Willie was never there, but I saw him during that time. One more thing about that guitar, you know, Willie DeVille's unsung connoisseur, hero in the music world. I mean, James has said he should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Musicians know who he was and love him. I mean, he had everything. He had the chops, he had the voice, he had the looks, he had the style. Many, uh, many emulated his look and tried to get his sound so when I saw that guitar and by the way that guitar was in Germany and
and you always wonder if a guitar could talk what are the stories that it would tell you and you know the mystery is how did this guitar end up in this collector's uh, collection in Germany and then he died and the widow asked my friend to start selling the guitar oh, that's how that's I found happened. That's how I and it was guitar. destined to be rest with you. I mean, guitars yeah. have a way of weaving their way around. It's in good hands. And again, it got back to the creator's hands, which is really, really cool. And James, thank you so much for your thank contributions you, oh, well. to, you to the luthier me. world. Thank I mean, really incredible me. honor to include one of your books and Willie's guitar in, in uh, 108 Rockstar Guitars collection. Yeah, rock and roll.